Welcome back students to this session. I will be talking more about energy metabolism and nutrition. We saw how dietary fat, dietary carbohydrates, what is their importance and the different RDAs, DRI, EAR, upper limit etc. Now I will take it further. We didn't talk about proteins. Now let us see what is the role of proteins. But before that, what are proteins? Proteins are nitrogen containing compounds. So there is an important term in this that is known as nitrogen balance. So let us look at the nitrogen balance. What does it mean? Now you may know that the flow of nitrogen, how does it happen from different, uh, from the atmosphere to our body, how everything is happening. Now nitrogen, nitrites and nitrates are acted upon by bacteria, the nitrogen fixation bacteria and plants and that is how it reaches our body. Okay, we assimilate these compounds as proteins in our diet. Reduced nitrogen enters the human body as dietary free amino acids, proteins and the ammonia produced by the intestinal tract bacteria. No ex mechanism exists in our body for storing excess amino acids. Excess amino acid derived from surplus dietary protein are metabolized and the nitrogen is excreted in the form of urea. We know that. Now nitrogen is excreted from the body as urea, uric acid or creatinine and these are called as the non-protein nitrogenous substances or NPN and ammonium. So urea, uric acid, creatinine are the NPN plus ammonium. So that is how this nitrogen is flowing from everywhere to everywhere this is going. Now it is important that this nitrogen be balanced within the body. So let us talk of this nitrogen balance. Nitrogen balance has been defined as nitrogen balance is equal to nitrogen ingested minus nitrogen excreted. How much is taken in? How much is thrown out? So nitrogen ingestion is mainly in the form of protein and nitrogen excretion is mainly in the form of urea. Now nitrogen balance is said to be zero, that is the person is said to be in nitrogen equilibrium if the protein synthesis is equal to protein degradation and somebody is said to be in positive nitrogen balance when the protein synthesis is more than the protein degradation and somebody is said to be in a negative nitrogen balance when the protein synthesis is less than the protein degradation. MCQ point of view, all this should be known. What is meant by nitrogen equilibrium? Positive nitrogen balance and negative nitrogen balance. Positive means protein synthesis is taking place. Negative means protein degradation is taking place. This is known as, uh, that is how we come to know nitrogen ingested and nitrogen excreted. Okay, now let us see what is meant by nitrogen equilibrium more, more about all this. A healthy adult is usually in nitrogen equilibrium. That means the amount of protein that is synthesized is equal to the amount of protein that is degraded. So, and so naturally the intake is equal to excretion. Whatever nitrogen intake is there, that much is also being excreted out in the urine, feces or stools. Every sweat also, all this is uh, uh, intake is equal to nitrogen excreted in urine, nitrogen if excreted in feces, nitrogen ex excreted through sweat. Let, I won't go into the details of this. What is that? Basically, remember that nitrogen is intake is equal to excretion. Now, to maintain this nitrogen equilibrium, what is recommended? Recommended protein allowance for adult male is 0.8 gram per kg body weight per day. So, if somebody is 70 kg, though we say 0.8, it may be around 70 grams of protein are required for a healthy individual to maintain his body proteins, to maintain the nitrogen equilibrium within the body. That much 0.8 grams per kg body weight of protein is required. So, an adult male, if you look at it, of 70 kg body weight loses about 270 millimoles of nitrogen per day. 170 uh, millimoles in urine as urea, 65 moles, millimoles in feces as remnants of secretory proteins, shed mucosal cells, dietary debris, 20 millimoles through skin and 10 millimoles through other roots. So an adult male loses about so much and it is essential all this be replaced for that person to be in nitrogen equilibrium. And this replacement has to come through nitrogen intake is only through proteins and it comes only 
mainly and only through proteins. So loss in females if you take it, this is an adult male. So if you take a female, it is more during menstruation. So lo more lot of loss of blood, more loss of proteins. And this will naturally mean that during that time, the protein requirement is going to be more in females to maintain the nitrogen equilibrium. So we will go on to uh, what I just say, positive nitrogen balance. What do you mean by positive nitrogen balance? The person is synthesizing proteins. Protein degradation, protein synthesis is more than the protein degradation. So let us see when this is positive nitrogen balance. Intake is more than loss. That is one way of put, uh, putting it. Intake is more than the loss. Protein synthesis is more than protein degradation. Whatever protein is taken in is being used for protein synthesis and protein degradation is less. It's protein synthesis is more. So net synthesis of proteins and nutric acid. So po positive nitrogen balance or net protein synthesis occurs during when does it occur? You have to think logically. One, during growth. Definitely during growth, the person has to be in a positive nitrogen balance. Why? Growing means uh, proteins are being synthesized at, in each and every cell of the body. So that is why growth is taking place. So when a person gains, we are talking of only the height here, growth can be both longitudinal or horizontal also. So when a person gains, gains around 5 kg weight, about 1 kg proteins are added to the the body that is just a general assumption so growth is one thing what about the other th other reasons another conditions pregnancy definitely it, the person the female is going to be in a positive nitrogen balance protein synthesis has to occur for the fetus to grow Recu when somebody is recuperating from a wasting disease, convalescence, the body is trying to recuperate, that is he is trying to come back to normal. So again protein synthesis is taking place. You look at an athlete in training, all of those people will be taking more and more protein diet is given to them. Why? During training there is going to be protein synthesis and for that intake has to be more. Intake has to be more and thereby high protein diet is recommended whenever somebody is in training also in uh, athlete in training then now which are the hormones that are responsible uh, insulin growth hormone androgens all these are responsible for bringing about positive nitrogen balance now let us look at further more about positive nitrogen balance Please note that protein turnover depends on food intake and nutritional status of the animal. Protein synthesis is increased as I said by insulin, it positive nitrogen balance, growth hormones and androgens. So we will go ahead with the negative nitrogen balance. What do you mean by that? When the intake is less than the loss, loss is more, intake is less and protein degradation is taking place. So there is net protein loss from the body. So protein degradation is more than the protein synthesis. There will be more nitrogenous waste products. Nitrogen from the diet is necessary to replace this used up proteins such as digestive enzymes, GI cells uh, lost in the feces, degenerated tissue components such as skin scales, skin cells and erythrocytes that wear out. The main function of the nitrogen or protein, this much at least is required to replace all these things. If that much protein is also not there, these are also not replaced and that will mean the person will go into negative nitrogen balance. So synthesis of proteins like plasma proteins, immunoglobulins, enzymes, all these will get compromised. The muscles will act as an emergency source of protein for the more vital organs. So depleted muscle protein will take place, blood proteins, antibodies and so a person in a negative nitrogen balance is more prone for bacteria bacterial infections and also more importantly edema is responsible for edema will be in edema now negative nitrogen balance when do we see this is seen during condition of insufficient protein intake like starvation fasting where there is inadequate quantity malnutrition omission of any one essential amino acid from the diet so what we call as poor quality protein one the quantity itself is less secondly the quality may be less low fat dieting without sufficient protein intake all these are seen in affluent people also 
negative nitrogen balance and it may be one insufficient protein intake but there is one more reason increased protein degradation like in surgery illness severe trauma burns road traffic accidents blood loss long term bed rest old age malignancy uncontrolled diabetes mellitus situation of excess corticosteroid glucagon epinephrine in all these things a person will be in negative nitrogen balance protein degradation is more so during starvation the muscle proteins provide the major source for energy production carbohydrates have a protein sparing effect so when most fat stores are depleted a starving human may lose as much as 6% of muscle mass per day plasma proteins especially albumin are depleted even faster and this causes reduction in colloid osmotic pressure leading to edema children suffering from protein cal calorie malnutrition like kwashi or kar exhibit bulging abdomen that is what is known as edema so what is we go on to now that we know what is important how it is important to maintain the nitrogen balance we'll go ahead with something called as protein quality how do we know which protein is a good protein and that is known as the biological value of proteins protein quality lot of different parameters are there by which we can tell whether a protein is a good protein or a bad protein now how do we tell it basically it depends upon the content of essential amino acids proper digestion and absorption of dietary proteins is also important to tell whether a protein is good or not a protein may be having all essential but if it is not going to get digested not going to get absorbed then that protein is of no use so protein quality depends upon the essential uh, amino acid content and also and how the body is going to Uh, how the handle this protein how the body is going to handle this protein by digestion and absorption so when tissues are being synthesized all the 20 acid amino acid must be present in proper proportion non essential amino acids are usually not limiting because we can synthesize them but even if one essential amino acid is not there the protein synthesis will stop at such time the other amino acids what will happen to them they will be used as fuel and more urea production takes place so it is essential that all the essential amino acids be present uh, always at the time of protein synthesis so we come to the protein quality and ideal dietary protein assuming full utilization will be the one that closely reflects the amino acid composition of the body protein is there such a protein we have to a question ourselves dietary proteins have wide variation in amino acid composition so we have terms called as biological value of protein and it has been found out that animal proteins are qualitatively more superior have high bv plant proteins have a wide range of bv ranging from almost none biological value may be zero to very high may also be there but animal proteins are usually qualitatively more superior they have high biological value so in general plant proteins are deficient in lysine methionine and tryptophan and are much less concentrated and less digestible than animal proteins maize bengal gram red gram proteins are deficient in tryptophan cereals are uh, wheat like wheat are deficient in lysine pulses are deficient in methionine so there are lot of uh, things that can uh, people get confused which one to remember c l p m pulses are deficient in methionine cereals are deficient in lysine c l p m uh, this uh, p m is primary somehow you will have to remember pulses are deficient in methionine now whichever it is deficient in we call that as the limiting amino acid and this can be overcome by mutual supplementation you combine a cereal with a pulse you will get the whatever is required is got in the diet essential amino acids lysine and methionine both will be available if mutual supplementation is done so let us go to the quality of protein different indices these are all some things which you will have to just remember so let us look at it biological value of protein is retained nitrogen divided by absorbed nitrogen into 100 
नेट प्रोटीन यूटिलाइजेशन इज रिटेन नाइट्रोजन अपॉन नाइट्रोजन इनटेक नॉट एब्सॉर्ब नाइट्रोजन बट नाइट्रोजन इनटेक इन टू हंड्रेड नाउ एनपीयू इज सपोज टू बी बेटर देन बायोलॉजिकल वैल्यू बिकॉज यू कैन कम टू नो हाउ मच ऑफ प्रोटीन इज बींग यूटिलाइज रादर देन हाउ मच ऑफ प्रोटीन इज जस्ट बींग एब्सॉर्ब सो यू नो वेदर द प्रोटीन यू आर टेकिंग इन टू कंसिडरेशन द डायजेस्ट कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ द प्रोटीन एज वेल वेन यू आर डूइंग द एनपीयू नाइट्रोजन रिटेन अपॉन नाइट्रोजन इनटेक नाउ नेट डायटरी प्रोटीन वैल्यू अनदर इंडाइस एनडीपीवी दिस लुक्स बोथ एट द क्वालिटी एंड क्वांटिटी ऑफ प्रोटीन एनडीपीवी दैट इज नेट डायटरी प्रोटीन वैल्यू इज इक्वल टू इनटेक ऑफ नाइट्रोजन इंटू सिक्स पॉइंट टू फाइव इंटू एनपीयू नेट प्रोटीन यूटिलाइजेशन यू हैव टू जस्ट रिमेम्बर दिस बिकॉज फॉर द सेक ऑफ एंट्रेंस एग्जाम सो लेट इज गो फर्दर देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड एज प्रोटीन एफिशियंसी रेशियो दैट इज पीईआर पीईआर इज वेट गेन पर ग्राम ऑफ प्रोटीन टेकन केमिकल स्कोर इज मिलीग्राम ऑफ एसेंशियल एमाइनो एसिड per gram of protein so we look at the essential amino acid composition we get chemical score there is something called as pdcaac s that is protein digestibility corrected amino acid scoring so again it looks at uh, the uh, chemical score but it has taken into consideration the protein digestibility also so these are the different indices in which it can be a protein quality can be estimated so different proteins already all this biological value its uh, npu all these have already been found out and there are standard tables available where you can even get the pdca is or you can even get the chemical score you will get the protein efficiency ratio everything is got in, in different proteins how much it contains is already Uh, different people have done it and tables are available so with this we come to the end of nitrogen balance uh, so we learned about the different uh, things that are happening always in from this class my take home message is remember that cereals are deficient in lysine and pro and that uh, pulses are deficient in methionine can you give an example of a cereal wheat rice etc cereals pulse uh, all the dals are pulses so you basically you need one need not be worried whether we are taking in enough protein or not whether mutual supplementation is taking or not usually most of the indian diets there is a mixture of cereal with a pulse nobody will be eating only the rice they'll be taking dal along with it nobody will be eating only chapatis they'll be taking dal or some other that and this will help in mutual supplementation of the deficient amino acid so with this we come to the end of energy requirements and the different uh, nitrogen balance nitrogen equilibrium positive nitrogen balance negative nitrogen balance also remember these conditions so that this will uh, remember these conditions because positive nitrogen balance negative nitrogen balance are the things which are asked in mcqs in mcqs they will be asking these following condition which of these are in positive protein synthesis is more then the person is in positive nitrogen balance if protein degradation is more the person is in negative nitrogen balance so which are the, remember negative nitrogen balance all the conditions like uh, you can take road traffic accidents you can take uh, uh, surgery illness trauma bacterial infections in all these cases a person will be in negative nitrogen balance positive growth pregnancy etc positive nitrogen balance is there how did they all come out with this actually there is a way it can be done that is protein intake nitrogen intake is equal to the nitrogen in the urine minus the nitrogen plus the nitrogen in the feces and in the sweat you can we can u plus f plus s is the formula for that intake Uh, minus all this will give you the nitrogen balance so that is how it is done i am not going into the details of it because not required at this stage so with this we come to the end of energy requirement energy metabolism and uh, nitrogen balance thank you